Australia can be a scary place, but it's not necessarily because of the spiders and the deadly snakes, or even the drop bears. There's plenty of other reasons to be scared, so today I'll just talk about some of my other real-life encounters. Okay, this story isn't exactly scary, not for me at least, but for my wife, it was very real. I call this Sunshine Coast Panic. When my wife first came to Australia, she had never really experienced camping before, so she decided that she wanted to go on a trip. At first I thought it would be a good idea to go to the bush, but she wasn't having any of it. She didn't like the idea of being stuck out in the wilderness all alone. So instead, we went to the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Yeah, it was nice. We paid for a uh, campsite at a local caravan park right next to the water, right next to the beach. It was good, except that at night, my wife suffered a severe case of panic. When she was trying to get to sleep, she kept hearing the sound of water splashing on the rocks down at the beach. She kept hearing people walk past to go to the toilet or whatever, and she constantly thought that we were under attack. She thought some bad guy was trying to sneak into the tent or whatever, right? I get it. My wife is a city girl from northern China. She's grown up in a very urban environment with big steel doors and steel bars over the windows. There's no chance that anybody's breaking into her house in China. But in Australia, in a strange place that we've never been to, with the sound of splashing on rocks and people walking past at night, with the only protection being a flimsy tent, it's understandable she went into panic mode, and she didn't sleep at all that night. Later, she wanted to go see the doctor. She had honestly never experienced anything like it, and if anybody out there has experienced panic, you know what I'm talking about. It can really feel like you're dying. So we went to see the doctor, and this is an interesting story in itself. We described what happened, and he gave an interesting suggestion. He said that a good way to get rid of panic is to have intercourse. Those are his words. Of course, my wife's English wasn't very good at the time, and she had no idea what he was talking about. I didn't bother translating it, because I thought it would be a bit embarrassing for her. But yes, this is what he seriously recommended, that when she's panicking, I should make love to my wife. Hmm. I later found out that uh, that doctor had fallen down from a tree. I'm not exactly sure what he was doing up a tree, but he fell down and broke his hip or leg or something, and had to have multiple surgeries. As far as I know, he's not practicing anymore. Anyway, that camping trip was over nine years ago, and we've never gone camping since. The only time I've used that tent was recently, during the lockdown. I set it up for my kids to play in the backyard. They enjoyed it, but refused to sleep there overnight. Fair enough. The next scary tale is about a dog, but before I get started, I'd just like to comment on pet owners. Most pet owners do the right thing. They have their dogs on leads and so on. Probably 95% of them would be like that. But occasionally you meet a pet owner who decides that their dog is completely okay with running around in the park where children are playing. This story I call Giant Dog. I took my family down to the local park where they'd run around and play and watch the ducks and so on. But then, out of nowhere, a giant of a dog came running up to my children. It was a massive dog. I believe it was an Irish wolfhound, as pictured here. They're huge, and even for me, it was quite scary. Understandably, my children were trying to flee. They were screaming and crying and all the rest of it. And what do you think a dog does when it sees a fleeing child? It chases them. Of course, afterwards, the pet owner came racing up and said, Don't worry, don't worry, he won't hurt you. He'll lick you to death before he bites you. And so on. I noticed that some people seem to think that their dogs are completely innocent, and it may well be true. But from our perspective, we just see a huge animal running towards us. My children were naturally terrified, and I don't blame them. It'd be equivalent to, say, a rhino charging down an adult. I don't care if the zookeeper says, don't worry, he won't gore you, he won't use his horn. No, it's human instinct to run away from a charging animal, and that's exactly what I would do. To say that we shouldn't be scared of that animal is ridiculous, just as it's silly to say that a child shouldn't be scared of this massive dog. It's ridiculous. The person shouldn't have had them off leash. It doesn't matter how friendly they think their dog is. And finally, the most scary thing in Australia at the moment, and no, it's not coronavirus, it's domestic violence. Coronavirus isolation prompts rise in domestic violence trauma cases in Queensland emergency departments, Health Minister warns. Family violence-related hospital trauma cases are on the rise. Attacks are reportedly increasing in brutality and severity. Yes, domestic violence is a very real cause of terror in Australia. 
Queensland Health Minister Stephen Miles had these words to say, I've been disturbed to hear from our emergency department staff that the reduction in sporting injuries and road trauma has been partially offset by trauma caused by domestic and family violence. If we look at some recent statistics, we can see that Queensland has had about 1,000 or a bit over 1,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus, but we've had almost 22,000 cases of domestic violence, and that's only since July last year. We average about 30,000 or more cases of domestic violence each and every year. This is an ongoing issue. Coronavirus has nothing on domestic violence. You can quote me on that if you like. We can see here that domestic violence doesn't just affect women. More than 26% of victims are men. So yes, domestic violence hurts everybody. I've experienced a couple of cases of domestic violence in my life. Uh, an old friend from high school, his dad one night just went crazy and started abusing his daughter. It was mainly emotional abuse, but I guess it had been going on for quite a long time based on the way my friend reacted. He ended up smashing his uh, PlayStation or Xbox or whatever it was at the time. Yeah, it wasn't nice to witness, and I can really understand how this can traumatise people. Just up the road from me, where I currently live now, there's a house that experiences domestic violence. I'm not exactly sure who the perpetrator is, but police have been there a couple of times to uh, intervene. However, even though the police have been there, nothing seems to ever get done about it. The family are still there, and every weekend we still hear the abuse. So these figures that I showed you before, I would suggest that these are severely underestimating the real consequences of domestic violence in Queensland and Australia. Just for your interest, most people outside of Australia think that snakes and spiders are the most dangerous part of Australia. Although they are dangerous, they almost never cause deaths. Here's what Google tells me about spiders. There have been no deaths in Australia from a confirmed spider bite since 1979. Hmm. So that's my video on fear in Oz. It's not the drop bears. It's not the spiders. It's not the snakes. The only thing to be truly scared about in Australia is some of the people.